Removing broken exhaust manifold bolts has never been fun. Well, maybe until now. This is the GM Master Kit from Easy Stud Out. Now, this is for removing broken exhaust manifold bolts on the small block Chevrolet, the big block Chevrolet, and even the LS, as you see here on this head. And then they even have their newest, which is the LT series of engines from 2014 up. Now you use this in conjunction with your welder. And in fact, they have a flexible MIG welding tip as well to help you get in those tight areas when obviously uh, these heads are still on the motor, still inside the car. Now let's face it, that's where the real difficulty begins. If you've got it on a workbench like we do, then you could possibly drill it out, uh, weld a nut onto it, um, several different ways to remove exhaust manifold bolts. However, I think this is the best way to do it with uh, a lot of heat from a welder, get that welder turned up. And I like the fact that these are basically covering up your ports uh, because the exhaust manifold is gonna be off to be able to use this. Uh, but let's take a closer look and use this and see what you think. And then we'll come back and talk about what we think about it. Well, with a company name like Easy Stud Out, it's pretty easy to figure out uh, what we're going to be doing here. But they have basically taken something that, uh, this is a process that's been used for, who knows, decades for sure. Uh, but they've made it easier, um, maybe simpler for sure, and uh, maybe even you know less mistakes with this type of system. And basically, it's removing broken studs from exhaust manifolds and uh, probably other things too, EGTs I believe uh, on the diesels. Uh, so there's various other kits that they make, but specifically uh, this is their GM kit. In fact, it's, it's several different types of, of GM exhaust manifold stud out kits. This is the, uh, the, I believe they're calling it their GM master kit. This is a brand new one. Basically this is for the LT series of engines. So in this kit, we have three different series. We have the GM big block, as you can tell by the huge ports there. Uh, and then we have uh, this, the LS series. So this is going to cover everything from a 4.8 all the way up to the 6.2. So your 6.0 liter, your 5.7, you know, early LS series, as well as uh, your 5.3 liter are all going to be covered with this one. And then this is going to be your GM small block. So going back from what, 1955, all the way up till uh, early 2000s, they were still running small blocks. Um, so that will cover that series of engines. So this will cover quite a few decades. And this is going to be your latest series of engines on the gas side. Um, another cool thing they have is basically a flexible MIG adapter. So you actually put this onto your existing MIG torch and it enables you to get in a you know, tighter area, kind of bend around a corner if you need to, to get to that stud. We'll go over that here in a moment as well. So you can buy these all independently or you can buy them in a kit like you see here. And by the way, don't just think GM, they also make these for, for Fords. Uh, Fords have this problem as well, as well as your Chrysler products as well, your Dodges, uh, your Ram trucks, things like that. And these kits will come not only with uh, the little templates there, but also with these little nuts, and I'll show you what's gonna happen here in a moment. So these little nuts, no threads on them, and they have a little shoulder on them as well. And then even an end ball mill or an end burr bit, if you will, uh, to clean up the area where you're about to weld. So let's take a closer look specifically on this LS head here. Here is a typical GM LS head. This is a cathedral port head, but as far as the exhaust side of things, they're all going to be identical from the 4.8 all the way up to the 6.2s. Again, port size may change, but as far as the configuration of the, the bolts in here, and by the way, on the GM LS, they are bolts and not studs. Some of the others will have studs and maybe sticking out a little further, uh, but for the most part, GM uses bolts on their exhaust manifolds. And most of the time, especially here on the ends, on either end, these are typically broken when you get them out. Uh, or when you remove the exhaust manifolds. And a lot of times that's where they're leaking as well. Now we've got three broken ones in here, this one on the end, uh, this one here in the middle, and this one here uh, next to the end. Now here's the cool thing. This says uh, GM48T and that's basically the LS series. 
Now, if you look and you think, well, it's not a full set there, uh, so how are we gonna do all six of the actual fasteners? Well, because right here it lines up, and then all we have to do is flip it over and it lines up there. So it's kind of Siamese, if you will. So it's going to line up either on these two ports, or if you need to do these two, you just flip it over, and then you can get to it there. Now, if you'll notice, this does have a front and a back side, and the back side is basically gonna be for these little nuts to, to sit in there, and we'll go over that here in one moment. And on the front side, you're gonna have this tapered area, and that's so you can get basically your, your torch in there, and that's going to center that up, your MIG torch, and to make sure that you're actually welding there in the center, because you you're gonna weld that blindly. Um, so make sure that you get your tip all the way in there, and then we're gonna make sure our welder's hot enough, and go ahead and weld that spot. But anyway, so what we want to do is we wanna take these little nuts here, which as I showed you has a little shoulder on it, and that shoulder is going to go to the inside of that insert so that you've got a flush area back here. Now, this may want to fall out, so what they've included is a little bit of grease. Now you could use your own grease, not a problem, uh, but just take a little bit of this and we'll go ahead and do this side first. Uh, so we wanna do this one and this one. I'll put a little bit of grease here and that's gonna help hold that in place. And if you wanna do this fast, you could probably hold this and take your torch and zip it. But the idea is to do this in the vehicle, so obviously you're not gonna have this clear line of sight. So the idea would be to either put some nuts on the existing studs or take you some bolts and go ahead and put a couple in there and that'll help get things lined up. So now you can see there's our broken stud there. There's our broken stud there. So now we're lined up. We can just take our torch and zip that in there. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna pull that back off because I'm gonna show you something else. Now, one thing we wanna make sure of is we wanna make sure that we've got a clean bolt because most of the time these things are actually rusty because they've been broken quite a while. And, uh, and so obviously the elements have gotten to them. They're steel, not aluminum nor stainless steel. So they will be rusty where they've been broken. Well, if it's down below the surface like this one is, you need to get that cleaned up uh, before you, you start working on it. And the idea is you really don't want these sticking up too proud. You've got a little leeway here because obviously of, uh, of this template here, um, but you don't want it too high because you do want to get some, some good weld on it for the heat to penetrate. Now this one's almost flush and that one, like I said, is pretty much dead flush. Just uh, we want to clean that up a bit. So. Even though these look clean, they are pretty clean, but if, like I said, if they were broken on an old uh, setup, then they're definitely going to be rusty. So I'm gonna take that little ball burr that they included with the kit and a little die grinder and just clean that up a bit. There we go. So that's going to give us a nice clean surface to actually weld that onto. Now on this one, I could just take probably my little die grinder with a flat disc and get to it. Or if I want to get to it here, I could do so as well. Now this head is bare and needs a complete rebuild. So if this were in a vehicle, you'd probably want to cover up your ports with something before you go grinding like I just did. Uh, but you could do that with tape or you could stuff some rags in there whatever you need to do. The cool thing is when we weld, the ports will actually be covered up by this. Okay, so once again, let's get our template on. Make sure we're centered up right over the studs. Now let's take a look here at what comes into this little uh, flex MIG package. So we get the flexible MIG tip or torch or whatever you wanna call that. Get a few tips, we get the shield, and then these are two adapters. One of these is an M6 and one of these is a quarter inch. 
Uh, most of your Lincolns, Millers, things like that are going to be quarter inch and even some of your Euro style. Um, this one here is a Euro style torch, uh, but I believe it does have the quarter inch. So we're going to take the shield off here. Take our MIG pliers and lay that aside because you're going to need that after you're done with this. And then we're going to make sure that we're using the right adapter and make sure that your wire easily feeds through there as well. Yeah, that's, mm, that didn't feel good. Yep, that's the metric. We don't want that one. This is the quarter inch. This is the one we want. The threads are pretty close on those, so they will thread in a couple of turns. Don't force it. There we go. That's good. And make sure you're using the right tip as well. Lay these tips aside. And then this, and again, make sure your wire feeds into the uh, to that insert there. And then you can thread on the flex MIG. And now this is going to slide all the way down here and cover up where your old shield used to go. And then we want to put the tip on, which actually I'll probably put that on later. I like to do that after the wire feeds through because I don't want that to be a hindrance in that wire coming through. And I would also keep this about as straight as possible when you're feeding that wire. So we'll put these two on after we feed the wire through. Again, this is optional. You do not have to use this flex MIG. If you can get your MIG torch in there, then by all means go ahead. But this is just going to provide you a lot more flexibility as well as convenience in using this. Okay, I've got my MIG on and I'm ready to feed this wire. And by the way, don't have this grounded, especially to the table or something where you could accidentally the wire come out and uh, arc against it. So I've got my ground actually back on the welder. I'm just going to bump this a few times. There we go. And so now we're good. It's actually sticking out. Now I can put my tip on. Shield on. And you want to have this wire cut pretty flush. Not like a normal stick out where you might be welding something on a table. Now we're ready to go. And now it's pretty simple. We want to get our tip in here. We want to fill that full of weld. Get over here, zip that one full of weld, and go to it. Got my flex MIG bent. Here we go. By the way, I would not have your torch cold. In fact, I would probably have it on the hot side, if anything. You definitely don't want to cold weld on these. And it's not unheard of that you might have to hit this twice. So now our nuts are welded on. I'm going to hit this with my ratchet. There we go. It may take a little practice. As you can see, I got a little too much weld on that one, kind of went over the top of the adapter there, but just pried it off pretty easily. Let's get this other one. Got everything lined up right there over the top of our stud. And there's the third one. Probably should have hit that with a little more weld, but as you can see, we got enough on it for it to come out. And as you can see here, nothing hurt on the head. And we'll just see how well that cleans up. See, I arced it right there. 
what you're welding on this so you can't expect this to stay pretty forever but you can see it's still cleaned up pretty well just a paper towel again a little spatter there worked out great now let's talk about pricing first and that is the gm master kit it's going to run you about 180 bucks on amazon that's another cool thing easy to get uh, fast to get so 180 bucks for the master kit I'm not sure what the LT is going to sell for. That's not quite on the market just yet. Probably I'm seeing all of kind of the independent ones right at $100, $120. So expect to see that. Uh, and they say a lifetime warranty on these. I like the fact that they add these little kind of nuts that go on the backside of the templates. And that serves a great purpose. You're not hunting for the right size nut or anything like that. And that they have that little shoulder on it that kind of provides that path that you can weld up to without welding too much slag onto your aluminum. The great thing about it is it is aluminum and it shouldn't stick to that. However, as we did, you'll see some little uh, burnt marks, if you will, over time. We think they worked exactly as they said they were gonna work and we did not have one failure. Now we only did uh, five or six of these. We did a few off camera as well, but again, they worked absolutely as planned. Now we know there's always going to be those exhaust manifold bolts that may take you a couple of tries and may just be a pain in the butt and have to resort to other measures as well, but that's no fault to the easy stud out kit. Hey, check them out for yourselves and also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.